Hello there, fellow fans of Warhammer 40k lore, and welcome to a rather special episode. From the get-go of today's video, you might have noticed something is a little strange about it. And yes, it is in fact not a video concerning the Imperium. Now, I haven't officially started doing Xeno's lore videos yet, but at the suggestion of one of my supporters on Patreon, I decided to make an introductory video of sorts, concerning every one of the major Xenos races from 40k. This is gonna be all prior to dealing in depth with the lore of any of these species, but I do think and hope that they can be treated as a stepping stone for when I do start talking about them in detail. Like the title of this here video says, we will start today with the Tyranids. In this episode, I will do my best to tell you what they are, and a bit of their history, if you can call it that, since that aspect is actually records of the Imperium's encounters with them. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see what the Tyranids are, shall we? The Tyranids were initially described in the first edition of Warhammer 40k, which was called Rogue Trader back then, with their basic form not very different from what we're used to today. Their only additional troop type was an enslaved alien race called the Zoat. At the time, which is in the late 1980s, they were not a very important race in the 40k universe, that's also because they were not playable. In later editions, they do become a playable faction in their own right, and it was also revealed that the Gene Stealers, which became popular due to the Space Hulk game, were in fact part of the advanced reconnaissance element of the main Tyranid Hive fleets. With that bit of backstory done, the Tyranids are an extragalactic composite species of hideous Xenos, that is actually more akin to a spacefaring ecosystem comprised of innumerable different bioforms which are all variations of the same genetic theme. The Tyranid race is ultimately dedicated solely to its own survival, propagation, and evolutionary advancement. The Tyranids collectively form a colossal superorganism, which travels across the universe in their great hive fleets of biomechanical hive ships. These systematically consume all other biomatter to enable its own rapid evolution and reproduction. All Tyranid organisms are synaptic, which means psychically reactive, and each creature within a hive fleet shares and contributes in a tiny way to a communal hive mind. This allows the trillions upon trillions of beings composing the Tyranid hive fleets to communicate and organize instantaneously on an incredible scale. The mentality of the Tyranid approach to warfare can be described with the phrase, quantity has a quality all of its own. From the lowly Ripper to the deadly Hive Tyrant and beyond, the signature of the Tyranid species is that they overwhelm their foe with sheer numbers. They reproduce massive quantities of highly virulent organisms in record time from the biochemical soup that they derive from the biospheres of the worlds that they consume. The components of a Tyranid Hive fleet travel almost exclusively in large groups known as swarms. These in turn possess specialized biomechanical creatures for destroying and consuming pretty much any and every kind of life form. Tyranids have evolved sophisticated methods of facilitating genetic transfer across species boundaries. As a result, a significant goal of any Tyranid invasion is acquisition of useful new biological traits from other life forms. These are used by the hive mind to enhance the Tyranid's effectiveness in consuming new worlds to gain more of the necessary organic raw materials for further reproduction. Now, in less fancy talk, that pretty much means that when the Tyranids invade a planet, they can effectively copy traits or abilities of the local fauna, and then literally create a new Tyranid bioform with those traits. And of course they can do this on an industrial scale. So, for example, say that a swarm invades an ice world, where very little can survive the cold. And let's say that there's a race of space bears that thrives in that environment because its biology evolved over millions of years to help it survive that harsh climate. 
So when the Tyranid Horde consumes those space bears, it can absorb and mutate the genetic traits which allows them to easily survive the cold. The first wave of Tyranids would easily die when attacking such a world, precisely because of that cold. By the time the third wave, let's say, is launched, then a lot of the creatures will have already adapted and would not only be able to survive more easily on the planet, but they would actually have an advantage over any defenders. And these creatures can do this in literally any environment as long as they have biomass. All Tyranids are reproduced by a single highly intelligent female bioform known as a Norn Queen. The Norn Queens of the High Fleet are the most important Tyranids within that fleet, for if they are injured or killed, the Tyranids cannot reproduce their numbers from the captured biomass. As an obvious result, the Norn Queens can only be found at the heart of the largest and most well defended of the Hive ships. The first recorded contact between the Imperium and the Tyranids places their appearance in the eastern fringes of the galaxy in the second half of the 41st millennium. However, it is rumored that the Ordo Xenos of the Inquisition had identified possible appearances of this species as far back as the 35th millennium. The Xenos emerged from the intergalactic space of the local group of galaxies, their hive mind drawn to the Milky Way by the psychic beacon of the Astronomicon, transmitted by the Emperor's presence from Terra. The first officially recorded contact with the Tyranids for the Imperium of Man came during a Tyranid attack on an ocean world called Tyran, and from there High Fleet Behemoth continued directly towards the center of the galaxy consuming all the worlds in its path. The Tyranids were defeated, barely, by the efforts of the Ultramarines chapter of Adeptus Astartes during the Battle of Macrag, although the Ultramarines had suffered devastating losses, which would take centuries to replace. Among those losses was the entirety of their first company of veterans. In the last century of the 41st millennium, Commissar Cephas Kane, while on a mission on an ice world called Nusquam Fundamentibus, discovered hibernating tyranids buried deep in the permafrost. The swarm was apparently carried to the planet by a hive ship, which had crashed on the planet seven millennia earlier, prior to any human colonization. Members of the swarm and subsequently the hive mind were awakened, but this swarm was eventually defeated. However, the Inquisition was very unsettled by the fact that the Tyranids had developed a presence in the galaxy possibly predating even the start of the Imperium. It is not known whether the crashed Bioship was on a scouting mission when it was lost, was a casualty in a pre-Imperium Tyranid invasion that was defeated by unknown adversaries, or part of a plan by a Tyranid superintelligence that may have seeded many worlds of our galaxy with such sleeper hordes. Towards the very end of the 41st millennium, the Tyranids returned to the galaxy with High Fleet Kraken, which instead of assaulting its targets as a single massed High Fleet, split into countless smaller fleets, each one enveloping a whole star system before reinforcements could arrive. The brunt of this new attack was borne by the Space Marine chapters known as the Sives of the Emperor and the Lamenters chapters. The Sives of the Emperor were almost completely destroyed in the wake of this event. Though the backbone of the High Fleet was broken by its defeats at the Battle of Icar IV and at the Eldar Craft World Iandan, the cost to the Imperium was still great, and many splinter fleets broke off from the Kraken to later wreak havoc deep within Imperial space, some even reaching the fringes of the Tau Empire. But they are filthy Xenos, so nobody cares about them. Only a few years later, High Fleet Leviathan unexpectedly appeared from below the plane of the galaxy, and attacked from two points, cutting off large portions of the galaxy from reinforcement. Just as it seemed the defenses of the Segmentum Solar, and perhaps Terra itself would be tested, the Tyranids were distracted by being deflected into the star system of a powerful Orc Empire. 
While the orcs are managing to stall the main advance of this Tyranid fleet, they are likely to re-emerge from these battles, vicious and stronger than ever, after having absorbed potent orcoid genetic material into their own genetic pool. Tyranid hive fleets travel through space by using the aforementioned hive ships, which are essentially gigantic biomechanical organisms genetically engineered to travel through a vacuum. These hive ships move in gigantic formations which can be likened to very large swarms of locusts. Typically, Tyranid hive fleets move in ad hoc formations known as tendrils. They migrate to nearby inhabited planets after consuming all the biological and organic material on a recently invaded planet. Through this cycle they can multiply several times over, often reproducing many times their original number. This basically means that if a tendril attacks a living world, that is, let's say, not very well defended, there's a good chance that by the time they move on, there would be two tendrils worth of tyranids. High fleets do travel with faster than light speed, though they never enter the warp. Instead, by using the specialized psychic power of an especially evolved hive ship, they manipulate the gravity fields of star systems to achieve their faster than light travel. The massive warp presence of the Tyranid hive mind, however, even though they do not travel through it, manifests itself via a phenomenon known as the shadow in the warp. The current collection of Tyranid hive fleets have migrated to the Milky Way galaxy, presumably after overpopulating or overfeeding in the nearby galaxies of the local group. Given that each Tyranid hive fleet has approached the Milky Way from a different galactic direction, this may imply that the Tyranids have consumed a disturbingly large number of different nearby galaxies. And on that ominous tone, I will end my introductory video on the scary Chittering Tyranids. I honestly hope you learned something from this introductory video, and that I didn't burden you with too much information. I do have to admit that I am not very good at making introductory videos for broader topics. With Imperial topics, it is easier because most of them are specialized into factions and different military branches. Like I said, I will also be doing introductory videos for the Eldar, the Orcs, the Necrons, and so on. I cannot say exactly when that is gonna happen, but they are coming sooner rather than later. If you have any thoughts or questions regarding today's video, as always feel free to put them in the comments below. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to support my lore video making activities, please check my Patreon page. The link is in the video description where even a couple of dollars a month can make a difference to me. I thank you kindly for watching and I will see you next time. The Emperor Protects.